Uh, it's great to be here. I want to say thanks to the TED group for scheduling me right after lunch to talk about food safety <laughs> and foodborne illness. Does it get any better than that? Nothing excites a crowd after eating a buffet than to hear about food poisoning. <laughs> but interesting enough, and I hope that you are not one of the people that is affected by this. hope no one in this group has been one, of the, one in six Americans that happened to get food poisoning. Now, in the food industry, we call it foodborne illness. Sounds better. But if I get sick, it's called food poisoning. Okay? And also, we see 325,000 people that have to go to the hospital for this. And I hope no one in this audience has been a part of that group. And I certainly hope no one in this audience is in this group. If you are, I can talk to you afterwards. <laughs> but 3,000 to 5,000 people are killed every year because of food. It's amazing. And that's really unacceptable. So we round up the usual culprits, as we say in the West. And those culprits we normally hear from everyone that we know of. Salmonella, E. coli. So we see that in beef and eggs, peanuts, peanut butter, beef. Okay? The products that we eat each day, we try to cook, and you see the labels, cook to 165 Fahrenheit to try to make those safe. But the industry also does a few other things as well. But when we look at the economics of that, not just the social or environmental issues that we do, when we look at the fact that one 0157 death from E. coli has an economic impact of $7 million. That's huge. That's a huge impact. So what does the industry do? It tries to make food safe. We try to make food safe, and ways that we do that vary and often include things like everyone's favorite, irradiation, or even more important things like a chlorine bath. So when my children were here over Christmas from college, I decided to cook them some chicken. So I fire up the grill, and I tell them, I'm going to make this food safe. I'm going to dip it in the pool. <laughs> I got what I call the yuck factor. It's like, yuck. So we don't always know what happens, but the industry is trying to do things. It's trying to make things safer. Is it working? The FDA has recall power on medical devices and some food, not all food. The USDA takes beef, poultry, and eggs. Big issues. But the FDA itself, we think of recalls as medical devices. But in, in truth, it's food or pet food. Salmonella, E. coli, all the things that we really don't want in our food. So in the last 30 days, 27 recalls were there, 21 were food-related. 21 were food-related. So what we've done is we, we look and we hope that we can find technologies and use the technologies to make our food safer. And one of the things that we've been doing is we teamed up with Texas Tech University in a collaborative effort for food safety, basically using and designing and now a patented technology using microwaves. The same microwaves that you have in your home. 2.45 gigahertz. Nothing new. Been around since the Big Bang Theory. Not the TV show, but the actual Big Bang Theory. And we hope it'll be around a little longer than the TV show as well. So we use these and we put these microwaves into a treatment chamber so that we can put food in, contaminated food in, and it comes out safe. Whether that's ground turkey, whether that's jalapeno peppers, tortillas, bread, whatever it is. We try to think of ourselves as path pathogen agnostic. We don't care that there's a pathogen. We don't care what it is. We just want to get rid of it. So we put this into our chamber. One end comes out the other and we hope it and we, and we take it from a, from a dangerous pathogen infected food into a safe food that now we can eat. And so when we look at that, a typical microwave in your house would actually has the ability to do pathogen reduction. The problem is it's, it's not effective. And what happens is you put something in the microwave, half of it may be safe to eat, but which half? Because you get a hot and cold spot. I mean, what's the first thing you do when you, when you take your soup out of the microwave? What do you do? You stir it. Why do you stir it? Because of this. It's hot on one side, cold on the other, and you kind of want it to taste good. You also hope it's safe. That's what we work on and try to do. And so we hope that there are new technologies for the ability to make food safe. People will do strange things with the microwave. I do not advocate treating your pets. Only your pet food. Only your pet food. 
So we had something that was kind of interesting. We had the BBC come out and do an interview and do some discussions with us because we did something else besides safe food. We need more food. We need to feed people. And one of the things that we've been able to accomplish is to extend the shelf life of products, make them last longer. And one of the products that we did that on is a vast staple of bread. We've also been able to treat water for E. coli and salmonella and other pathogens to make water safe as well. But the shelf life, when you think about it, bread lasts a week, maybe 10 days. So we've been able to achieve 60 plus days on that. So that means one loaf of bread doesn't get thrown away. And why does it get thrown away? Typically, it gets thrown away because of mold. 40% of the, of the food in the United States is thrown away. That's about $165 billion worth of food, just thrown away. Okay? This is a tortilla. And in Texas, this is a staple of life. It's very important. Okay? So I'm real proud of this one. Okay? On one side, we see an untreated tortilla. And when I got my engineering degree in college, I was hungry and I would eat many things. But there's not a knife big enough to get that mold off. This is three weeks later, and these are organic, vegan, preservative-free tortillas. I didn't know there was a such thing. And they're stored at ambient temperatures. These are never put in the store in ambient. They're always sold in coolers because they can't last. They mold in one day. So we're real happy with that. But why is that important? Can you imagine all the resources that go into producing 40% of the food that's now thrown away? It's unacceptable. So trying to serve food that's safe is important. Trying to serve food where there is no food because of shortage is imperative. We must do this. We must find technologies and the ability to say, this food can actually get to somebody and get to them safely. And so we have an intervention that we like as a green technology. doesn't introduce any chemicals, doesn't use ionizing radiation. It uses microwave uses microwave. So we're real excited about that. And with that, I would say bon appetit.